So, what are you doing? Well, it's, it's not really coming out. Uh, you got to turn it the other way. I know, but I had to rest. Yeah, that's what you want to do. All right, guys, here's the joy of a cassette toilet. Snow's dumping, dumping it. Dumping the poo. She filled it. She gets to dump it. <laughs> Things kind of like a little suitcase. It's got wheels and extending handles. You can roll it around and uh, it just slides right in there, latches in. We lock it up. Now it's right under the toilet inside. So I open a little latch, pee right in there. It is a rainy, gloomy day, and it's been that way since we landed here in France. We gotta go run a few errands, so we have left the campground. We have no idea how motivated we're gonna be. If you missed the last few videos, or you're brand new to our channel, we are in a rental RV in France because our van is still on a cargo ship coming across the Atlantic Ocean from South America. It should be here in a few days and we will go pick it up and move back into our tiny house on wheels. But for now, we're driving this big rental beast. And it's a stick shift, so I'm grinding gears to find. You yeah. know what they say, you gotta grind them to find them. <laughs> That's what he's doing. But we're doing pretty good, but it has been several days of rain and it looks like it's just gonna continue to rain. So we're just chilling and relaxing and uh, still getting caught up from the big move from South America to Europe. And uh, gotta go get some groceries, some lunch. Yeah, we're just cruising around France in an RV. Waiting on our van. We're gonna try this gas and up thing again now that we figured out how to unlock the gas tank. Now we have heard that some of these will require a pin for a credit card and we don't have that set up yet. We don't think, we don't know. So let's see what's gonna happen. Also, gazole or gazole, G-A-Z-O-L-E is diesel. We double checked on the translator. We had heard it on a video about driving in France. success <laughs> I like it when uh, it's uh, not self-serve yeah full service I'm gonna miss that 121 euros 67 liters the price in gallons for you guys back in the States is seven dollars and twenty cents a gallon it's a little bit different than the US, yeah. than the US. all right van life in France is officially begun we uh, stopped at the grocery store to pick up a few items. I did get a butternut squash and a rotisserie chicken. The rotisserie chicken was about $8, but it was giant. It was huge. And it didn't feel like it had a lot of salt or any other no, things in it. it. healthy looking chicken. Yeah, it was good. And so it'll make probably four meals. But chicken and rice with some, or butternut squash in the Aldi's parking lot in after we got groceries. Lot. Yeah. And uh, we keep saying in France, but Europe's going to be a little bit different than South America. It's not going to be enter a country and explore that whole country and then move to another country. There's some visa rules here that require us to move in and out of mainland Europe and, and pop out at different times. And we'll explain that later in another video. But what you need to know is... We're in France now. Tomorrow we could be in Belgium. Three days later we could be in Switzerland or Germany or Italy. So it's not going to be like a series of France. We're doing all of France. We're going to be zigzagging all over this really amazing continent. And we're going to take you with us. 
All right, guys. Another thing we have to do when we get to a new country is get cell phone service. Look here. They even have the Google Pixel. But in any event, we're here at Orange. We understand they have pretty good coverage for the entire EU. So we got to get a SIM chip and we got to learn how much it's going to cost and how much data we get. One thing we did before we got here is we set up this uh, international online SIM. So when we landed, we could activate that. I already had it on the phone and it gave us 10 gigs, which meant we would have internet for the first few days give us plenty of time to do this but it was very expensive it's definitely not the way you want to go for a long time but it was good to have it right when we hit the ground and for maybe in emergencies <laughs> we successfully got two sim cards it looks like it was very difficult with the french versus english and uh us trying not to hold up the long line behind us and ask too many questions we just bought something. He said it's our only option. It looks like it's almost a tourist pack because it says holiday on the cover. It's a 14-day starter pack. It comes with 30 gigs, and it cost $40 each. So we just paid $80 for two SIM cards that should work throughout the entire EU. Now, once we get them set up, we'll download the app, and we'll get in there, and we'll see what kind of packages we can buy after the initial 14 days you know, runs out. And um, we've been referred by a few people that Orange is a good choice for us, but that you always are keeping your eye out for a country that has a better deal. So that's where we're at. Once we get these things working, we'll tell you what it looks like. It's also four o'clock. It's been raining all day. We've gotten our errands done for the most part, but we're just gonna head right back to the same camp we've been staying at for tonight. And we have decided tomorrow, rain or shine, because it has rained for four days straight since we've been in France, rain or shine, we're going on an adventure. I got the pheasant. Did you get the phones figured out? Mine's going. Um, it looks like you can top up. It's not going to be incredibly cheap. It's not as expensive as what we just bought. I'm a little bit overwhelmed, so I'm going to rest and then look at it some more. That's where we're at, GMO. We have internet and we have French cell phone numbers. Good morning. We have left the campsite. We had a very peaceful night. I think we are about 95% adjusted to the new time zones. It is another rainy gray day, a little bit colder today. We are definitely getting into winter time here. Um, the locals say it's actually fairly warm compared to normal, but we are making the drive over to a little town and the way you would pronounce it if you were reading it in English is sinless. S-E-N-L-I-S. -E Rain or shine, we're going to walk around this little town today and it's supposed to have some cool stuff. So, driving this gigantic motorhome is even more difficult than our van because it is so wide. So as we get into these old cities, it's uh, narrow roads with retaining walls on both sides. Kurt is doing a fabulous job, but we've come just outside of town a little bit to try to find somewhere to park this big monster rig. Yeah, and I don't think Snow told you, but this is a medieval village. So this goes way back to the 900s when it was built. And so the streets are indeed narrow and the buildings are right on either side. So. There's not much wiggle room and some of these corners are pretty tight, but it is historic and beautiful. All right, we found parking tucked way back over here in the corner. It's only about a half a mile walk up to the to Notre Dame. Now, something I should tell you about this cathedral. It is, I think, the largest Notre Dame cathedral in France. I don't know if it's the largest. I think it has one of the tallest spires. We'll get all the details when we get there. I don't think it's the largest area-wise. I think it's got a height. I think it's pretty up there in the height. We'll see when we get there. But as we walk up into this town, we're passing a couple of cemeteries. And the, the church here, the cathedral here, is supposed to be beautiful. We'll try to get some history of this town for you as we walk through. 
So this is a walled city and on the outer walls of this city, there are still some remnants. I'm not sure if we'll make it out there or not, but this is what I was talking about. See the narrow streets and either people do business here. I think some people maybe even live in these old structures, but just as I said, I think this has apartments here, but it looks like an old church. And you can see right through there, the spire sticking up for Notre Dame. <laughs> Look at this. Wow. The moss kind of up on top of the roofs and the cobblestone roads. And we were fortunate, I thought we were going to get here just after fall. The leaves had fallen off. But as you guys can see, there's still some golden leaves up in the trees. It just makes the landscape beautiful. And even though it's been cloudy and overcast and rainy, it's still really pretty and unique here. And this is one thing I enjoy about historical sites is you can see how the mortar has just washed away, revealing the old stones. Europe is, of course, famous for all its war history. Maybe not something to be excited about, but we are definitely interested to learn a lot more about that especially the World War I and World War II. But it goes way back to the days of kingdoms fighting kingdoms. One thing the owner of the campground told us at the last campground is that we are just south of the area where the Germans stopped heading this way. So through here, there's a lot of really old buildings that weren't bombed and destroyed in the wars. But as we head north towards Antwerp, where we're picking up our van in a few days, we will get more and more into areas that were just destroyed. Very famous battle sites. But while we're in this region, we get to enjoy very old things. To say that is an amazing, beautiful church is a crazy understatement. But what I want to make sure you know is they started building this in 1151. They finished it in 1191. And they did some major reconstruction work on it all throughout the 1500s. But one, it's amazing that they can build things like that without the equipment we have today. And two, it's even more amazing that it's still here. All right, we stumbled up on a nice little fruit and veg market. Nice looking cabbages. What is that? 
nice lettuce. All the food looks so good. Indeed, potatoes, green beans, plum tomatoes, beef steak tomatoes, green, yellow, red peppers, eggplant, fennel, some kind of greens, leeks, zucchinis, cucumbers, green beans, vine potatoes. This looks like spinach or some other kind of greens. Potatoes, carrots, onions, potatoes, beets, turnips. We have all of those potatoes that you eat for breakfast. What if we make some creamy potato and leek soup? Ooh. Yeah, if we come back by here. Look at this room. thing right here. We got the market. Little coffee place. Look at this. They've, they've even got a nice meat market out here. Let's go look at this. Wow, so cool. Pule, which is chicken, chicken breast. Hi, how are you? All right, guys, I just got an idea for the van when we need to make a little extra money. We're gonna put a rotisserie on the side of it. Look at this thing right here. They've got potatoes, chickens. I think there's even some little ribs there. Oh, sausages. Ooh. Now it is a Tuesday, so we definitely were not expecting an uh, outdoor open air market, especially given that it's cold and rainy. But the market is open for business, and look, they have a little seafood restaurant here. So they've got some urchins back there, some sea urchins, some shrimp. So, oh, look at those big giant langoustas back there. Crabs, snails, escargot, I think is what they call them here. Big giant stone crab legs, mussels, all kinds of oysters, different kinds of fish. It's really iced nicely and smells delicious. They even have some seafood salads and some fried fish. There's some flounder. Look at that. It's skin. Wow. Quality of the food looks good. And unlike most seafood markets we've been in, there is absolutely zero seafood smell. It actually smells very fresh in there. What a fascinating little place. <laughs> I had no idea. Did you? No. no. Look at this, this market. One of my favorite things about traveling the way we do. I mean, you if you came to Paris on vacation, you might maybe take a day trip out to this town but you probably wouldn't because you'd be limited on time and you'd be picking the more popular towns but these small little places are where you see the magic so what a cool place and so this market goes on and on so boucheria boucherie tripperie cacucacucherie <laughs> again i'm sure i'm butchering it from spanish but you can see Another meat market, another fruit and veg market, really done nicely. Oh, they got some nice looking white asparagus. They even sell clothes out here. Ooh, crepes. Some nice shrimp. Wow, look at these big. This cashew. So 70 euros, I believe, per kilo. 35 euros per kilo for the fish. That's, so just so you guys know, it's not one to one. The Euro is worth a little more than the dollar, maybe 90%, but the fish looks like it's about $30 to $20 a pound, even the calamari. Wow, and they got a little cleaning table over here. Look at those giant scallops he's cleaning over there. Look at that. He's just cleaning them up. Look at these big giant mushrooms, guys. They got white ones, they got brown ones, and they got oyster ones. And then even the tomatoes back there, I'm not sure what kind they are, but all sorts. And grapes, and of course we're in France, grape country. But the produce looks absolutely phenomenal here. There's some dates, pineapples, pears, grapefruits, walnuts, chestnuts, which are seem to be very common here. Wow. So this little booth is fascinating. Fascinating. They have all sorts of threads and buttons and ribbons and different types of materials and bobby pins and safety pins. And 
Well, you can see for yourself. And then, of course, France is infamous for their cheese. And here's a big cheese area. Wow, look at that. Look at the gargonzola there. Wow. What a fascinating place. All right, cool, cold, rainy morning. Stopped off for a little coffee. Snow had a little latte. <laughs> and I had my typical little cafe americano. And we got a little Biscoff biscuit with it. So. All right, so this is 4.80, so basically five euros for two cups of basic coffee. But with this cool weather, it was needed. So as we walk around this little town of Sinless, uh, you can kind of notice there's an inner ring and an outer ring. So this road right here that we're walking on right now would kind of be the inner road around the inside of the city center where the cathedral is. And I'm sure back in the day, all the markets and stuff. And now it seems like the markets are kind of on the outside. But as we take her right up here, you can see this is sort of the gateway into the city. And so as you come around to get into the center, there's only certain areas where you can get in that have these big gateways and everything else is kind of buildings and structures to keep you from getting inside. And I'm sure it was designed this way for defense, but look at this, wow. And, and so now we would be inside sort of the inner city, inner city. See how narrow the roads are and they've obviously combined it for little bits of parking. And the buildings are all made of that limestone we keep talking about from the nearby limestone quarries. Look at this, how fascinating, right guys? I just think of the fascinating layout of this city as we're walking in here. There's really no way to get inside. So I'm just thinking back in medieval times, which was when this town was built, of how you would possibly invade this. There's so many places for defenders to be up in the buildings and so many lookouts where you couldn't see them. I can't imagine trying to sneak down these roadways to try to infiltrate the city center. And as you can see, now we're inside near the cathedral. We're inside the city walls. And even in here, you can see this inner city wall that I was talking about. So not only do they have all the structures, but they even have inner walls. And look here, you can see some of the historic buildings maybe haven't been quite refurbished as much. But look at this. Wow. So I do believe we are in the courtyard of the Royals. And it looks like this is an old apartment for the Royals. And I guess that's why they have this inner wall right here. But what a fascinating place. And look, you, look at the view you have of the cathedral, cathedral from right here. Many French dynasties and monarchs chose to live here in Senelis. They liked this area because of how close it is to the Chantilly Forest, and they were able to feast on venison all of the time. Today, the city is known as a tourist destination to see the Gothic Cathedral we showed you. But there are a lot of cool things about this place. In the third century, they built a seven meter high wall all around this little city. They did that to fight off the Frankish attacks that were happening. That wall was used until the 13th century, and a lot of it still stands today. Sinhalese did see some activity during World War I. The Germans briefly occupied this village in September of 1914. They actually executed the mayor and six other civilians that lived here. But the, the occupation was short and then they kind of moved on. So a lot of the city remains. So we're getting ready to head back to the, the camper because the rain's supposed to get heavier as the day goes on. But as we walk through these streets, these cobblestone streets, these narrow sidewalks, the buildings right up along edge, 
it's a bustling little village with cars and everything passing by and expert parallel parkers parking everywhere. That's the people that live here. But I kind of imagine as you're walking through here, what it would have been like several hundred years ago or five, six, seven, eight hundred years ago that uh, you see them dressed up in their medieval dresses and suits, probably donkey carts and wheelbarrows like we see in the movies. So as you walk through these streets, you can kind of imagine what that would have been like. So our first real medieval village in the north of France was pretty cool. We're back in the van. Kurt heated up and doctored up some leftover chicken and rice. It is good because it is rainy and chilly. I added some beans, be careful. <laughs> I don't know. But we timed everything about right. It did start to rain on us pretty heavy as we got back into the van. But we are nice and dry and cozy. And I think next up is the campsite. Yeah, we gotta head north looking kind of make sure we have a backup because we got a little ways to drive and it gets dark early so we need to make sure this campsite's open or have a backup plan if you like this video be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos and don't forget you can always follow us over on instagram to see what's going on in between videos cheers guys